Welcome everyone to the next part of this series and New Year's resolutions I have with me today, Certified Health and Wellness Coach, Carrie Billings, and we're going to be talking to you about goal setting. Carrie, welcome to the Fitlandia podcast. It's great Thank to have you. Thank you. And I'm, I'm so excited to be here. Oh, we're so excited to have you. And before I hand it over um, for you to share a little bit more about your practice and what you do and your qualifications, I do want to point out to our Fitlandians out there that you are one of the expert practitioners that regularly contributes to the Fitlandia website. And why that's important is because it's 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 critical to me it's one of our core values that we actually bring in highly qualified practitioners that support this value of ending dieting and actually making a lifestyle change getting out of those negative patterns so um carrie's been with us for a few months now it's been great to have her content in there um, i'm sure she'll also mention that she's a behavioral health counselor which just really amps up her qualifications to be with us because it is about shifting behavior and your mindset. So Carrie, with that, please go ahead and, and share a little bit more about yourself. Okay, great. Well, um, I am, I live in Portland, Oregon, which is a beautiful place to live. And I work here as, like you said, behavioral health counselor and a certified health and wellness coach. I have a master's degree in counseling and I have my certification in health and wellness coaching. So I've been able to bring those two things together to really work with people regarding behaviors and regarding you know the things that they really want to work on it's such an exciting field to be in because i really get to work with people and help them develop that vision for what they really want for themselves and then help them empower them to really find their way to that vision in really positive ways and so it's to me the best job in the world and i absolutely <laughs> love it so. awesome and where are you based again in Portland. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So today we're talking about goal setting. Yes. And specifically related to New Year's resolutions. So while um, there's there's a part of Fitlandia that like hates the idea of New Year's resolutions because right. we're really creating this lifestyle, there's also something really beautiful about this collective intention to better ourselves. But why is goal setting so important as part of that process to reach and maintain our our goals? Well, I mean, goal setting is, it's, it's having a plan. It's, you know, you set a New Year's resolution and often it's broad. It's, you know, I want to eat healthy or I, you know, I'm going, I want to do something like that. And by taking the time to look at that piece and set some goals that will help you get there, you, you can get there. I, and I think um, there's a quote, a Pablo Picasso quote that I absolutely love about goal setting that to me sums it up, which is that you know, our goals can only be reached through the vehicle of a plan. And, yeah. it's, you know, he says, in, in which we must fervently believe and upon which we must vigorously act. And I really agree with that. I think that, that it's important to define it and then put those pieces in place. Yes. And I I can totally relate to anyone out there that, that is just even overwhelmed with their lifestyle. Um, <laughs> oftentimes, I'm overwhelmed with my own lifestyle. Um, but planning is the number one thing that you can do in order to achieve your goals. Because one of the things that we really promote and support is moving every day and cooking your own meals. That's really the only way to take true control of your health is as much as those convenience foods are super helpful. Um, those diet convenience foods are actually going against your goals in the long run. They're a very short term solution. So I love that you mentioned planning. And and I do want to even talk about like, uh, everyone's on this journey of fitness, but they're also on a journey of figuring out what planning techniques work best for them. Exactly. Um, so do you have any techniques that you've found working with your clients really tend to work best? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when setting goals, I think it's really important to think about what you will do as opposed to what you won't do. I think a lot of times you want to set a goal to, <laughs> I'm going to stop drinking soda or I'm going to stop eating, you know, a certain thing. And those are really, really hard things to measure, um, to stick to. And I think having something, again, positive, I really yes. believe very strongly <laughs> in a, a positive goal to say, 
you know, instead of I'll quit drinking soda, maybe it's I will drink a glass of water at, you know, two o'clock and four o'clock, maybe the times that you would usually drink soda. And, you know, something doing it that way makes it so much more positive and, and something you can really track and, and measure and keep on top of. Yeah. And I think that's so important. It really is. I love that you're talking about giving a positive. Um, a lot of people come into switching into a healthy lifestyle, looking at it like deprivation, all the things that they can't have. First of all, you can have anything that you want. Yes. Just know that there are, for you and your body, there's going to be consequences to certain things and choices that you make. Um, But coming at it from, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to invite into my life. And certainly um, hydration and drinking water instead of soda is a great example of how to do that. I also like to, um, I've actually started double planning. Um, And I'll explain what double planning (laughs) is. So initially it was... Um, putting everything into my calendar. Okay, at this hour, I'm going to do this. You know, I have my podcast with Carrie, or um, here's where I'm going to have my lunch, or here's where I'm actually going to cook. I've actually taken that a step further, and I have a handwritten planner as well, where I write down, what do I want my day to look like? What's the overall thing that I want to achieve? Mm -hmm. And then I can back into that. Like, what's the priority of the day? Yeah, so you're setting your intention for the day and basing everything around that. Yes, and yeah, then I'm also that. giving myself yeah. an affirmation where I'm saying, I absolutely have everything within my capabilities to achieve this today, or wow. these things. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's that. all about putting that positive in there. So, yeah. from your perspective, you know, even when people are setting their goals and they're really excited in the, in the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you see are the things that cause people to quote unquote fail or revert back to an old lifestyle? Right. I, I think, you know, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier that, that goals, New Year's resolutions can tend to be very vague and very broad. Yep. And I think that there there's good in them and that they, they kind of get you in touch, you know, a little bit with your vision, with what you want for yourself, but they lack the plan to go with that. <laughs> and I think you end up fumbling around. You're not really sure what to do. And it, you know, taking that time to plan or double plan and, you know, put that, that thought into how do I get there? How do I make this happen for myself is really important. Right. And, and starting with that positive attitude too, that you Mm -hmm. believe that you can, but I often uh, share with people, this is what Fitlandia is all about is this mind zoning, this idea that you're really changing the patterns in the brain Mm -hmm. you're just doing it at a faster pace versus you know creating new habits there's studies that say it takes 30 days some that say it takes 60 days right but what happens too is when we get triggered by a major stress we tend to revert back to an old lifestyle unless we've given our brain a new path to follow and Mm -hmm. certainly this planning component is really important so what are some good components of having effective goals? Well, I believe in SMART goals, which SMART being an acronym for, um, you know, specific, very specific goals like we talked about. So taking that broad goal and coming into something more specific, something measurable, you know, something you can, you can see when you've achieved it and you, you know, you can see your progress and something achievable. So not too far out that there's no way you can do it. And what's great about that too, is you can start small. And yes. and that's a wonderful way to just build up, you know, that feeling of, I can do this, you know, starting small and accomplishing the smaller goals gives you the confidence to start, you know, pushing out and, and building some bigger ones as you go, which is great. So that's really important. And then the R being relevant, making sure it's really relevant to what your <laughs> vision is. And then of course, you know, time bound or timely. So it, it has an ending point. It's, yeah. You know, and typically what we'll do is we'll set weekly goals and it's, you know, over this week, I'm going to do these certain things. And then when the time period passes, you can evaluate that and say, how did I do? And so I think that's a great way to go. So I I think that it's just the best framework out there. It makes a lot of sense. Yes. So smart goals and and, uh, related to that, it's super easy to not realize that you're actually being vague. And and when Mm -hmm. we talk about that specific, um, when I work one on one with clients, they'll be like, yeah. I'm going to work out three times this week. More specific. What does that mean? 
is it for 30 minutes? What kind of activity are you going to do? Being really thoughtful about that. And here's a great example. Well, yeah, I'm going to work out three times a week for 30 minutes. I'm going to get two of those as like a brisk walk. And one of those is going to be strength training. That That's completely different than I'm going to work out three times this week. Because yeah. then you have the intention of I'm going to strength and tone and increase my metabolism. But I'm also going to you know, work on my heart health, which by the way, when you strengthen tone, you're still working on your cardiovascular health because yes. you will get your heart rate up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I really agree with that. And I think it's so important too, for people to take that time to think about what does my week look like? When can I do this? Right. And to identify that ahead of time and say, you know what, I'm getting off work early on Tuesday, or I have kind of a block of time and to commit to it then instead of the vague, like you said, I'm going to work out three days this week. Yeah. Thinking about it ahead of time and making a plan for it really helps you to be successful. Yeah. And whatever tool you use to manage your lifestyle, whether it's the calendar on your mm -hmm. iPhone or your laptop or, you know, a written planner that you use, put it in there on that date at that time. Um, and Carrie and I will talk about why that's really important. But then you'll start to think about the more specific that you get, the more likely you are to be successful at achieving it because then you can yes. go, oh wait, if I'm gonna walk twice and do a strength training once, then I know I can get my two walks in on my lunch break at work because I can walk around the, the office park or, right. or whatever it is. Um, but it's gonna be a little bit more challenging for me to do my strength training or Maybe that'll be even easier because you'll do it at home using your right. Fitlandia videos. But but whatever it is, you'll be able to, the more specific you get, the better you're going to be at planning it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I think it's really helpful, too, that once you've set you know a goal to take a look at it and then evaluate it based on your confidence that you can achieve it on a scale of one to ten. You know, how confident am I that I can achieve this goal? And if you're saying two, then it's Ooh, important to look at it and say, what can I change to make me, you know, to bring up that confidence? And I mean, if you're, you know, if you're saying a seven or an eight or a nine, you're in good shape. But I think yeah. you know, anything less than that, it's, <laughs> it might need some tweaking. So I think it's important to think that through and, and look at how confident you, you feel. Okay, I want to recap that tip because okay. um, I think that is fantastic and something <laughs> I hadn't heard of before. Oh, good. Um, which is taking your SMART goals and then evaluating each goal giving it a rating on a scale of one to 10, one being the lowest, 10 being the, the best of your ability um, from what you know and your gut to be able to achieve that. I think that's fantastic. And then really going after anything seven or above or maybe looking at adjusting anything below a seven. I love that, Carrie. Like, <laughs> good, good. Yeah, it's, it is. I think it's a great, I think it helps quite a bit. Really puts you somewhere where you have that much more likelihood of really achieving what it is that you want to achieve. Yeah, and I want to add to that. If you do have things on your list that are a six or below, mm -hmm. be really gentle with yourself. We yes. are, especially women, I swear, especially women, we are wired to be hard on ourselves. Yes. Um, and we might look at that list um, and go, wow, five of the seven things I put on there, I rated a six or lower. That is okay. Be really gentle with yourself because I promise you, once you start eating healthier and moving more, you'll be amazed at how much more efficient you are at all of your other tasks to then be able to put more on your plate. Actually putting more on your plate because you're more efficient because your body's functioning at a higher level. Would you, right. Has that been your experience too? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And like I mentioned earlier too, I mean, backing up a goal so that you feel more confident to do it. Maybe it's, you know, two days this week you're going to do something instead of three and knowing your own schedule, backing that up and then having that success yes. gives you that confidence <laughs> to move forward and maybe, you know, bite off a little more the next time and push yourself out a little bit more thinking, hey, I did so well with this the last two weeks, I'm going to add in a little bit more. Right. And it's, you know, it's, I think having those successes along the way is what what builds us in our confidence to keep moving forward and keep doing more. Yes, I definitely need to look this up to see like, how does the brain respond to success and how that snowballs because, and all of our stories of transformation that we're sharing, mm -hmm. they've each said, I just started with one thing. Like Larry was yes. saying, I just started with walking a block. Next thing you know, I'm walking two blocks. Next thing you know, I'm up to a mile. Right. And, and Shauna was said, you know, 
this week I'm not going to eat fast food. And, and again, to put that positive spin on it, maybe it's just, yeah, this week I'm, I'm going to cook one meal a day for myself right. um, instead of eating out, you know, whatever mm-hmm. that is. But giving the brain these wins to then go, yeah, that felt good. So it yes. loves to feel good and how that then just keeps snowballing and snowballing right. and creating something really amazing in your life. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think there are a couple of things that, you know, happen there. I think um, keystone habits, you know, finding that one that has that trickle down effect for a lot of people. It's exercise that yes. when you exercise, it makes you want to eat better. And, you know, it, it snowballs <laughs> from there and finding that one habit that if I can work on focusing on that one, the rest starts to fall into place. And yeah. and then the, the self, you know, efficacy of just the more you do, the, the better you feel, the more confident you feel, the more you want to do more because that feels really good. It does feel really good. It and, does. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that I love that. That's another great tip is just finding that trickle down effect. Cause you're right for me, the, the more I'm moving, the better I want to eat. It just, yes. and, and for other people, it's just the opposite. The better they eat, the more they want to move. Right. Um, so I love finding that, that one key thing. Mm-hmm. Now, when you think about clients that you've worked with in the past, um, anyone in health and wellness knows that there's a big surge in the beginning of the year. Right. Um, but what are some things that you can share with the listeners that would say, here's the time, like, be prepared. It's that two month mark or that three month mark, whatever it is from your experience, um, to expect kind of this like, okay, we're moving into the into the year more and we're we're moving away from that collective like yay right um and and you'll start to see people putting negative posts on social media about well you know out the window with that how can they stay on their path okay i i really believe that the the key you know as we've said with setting the goals is to set weekly goals yep. you know is to start with that that big vision to, to also set some goals that are maybe three months out, like in, in three months, this is where I'd like to be, you know, and, and those should be more specific too. So you have those that you're working toward in a smaller block of time, you know, okay, three months from now, and then week to week, setting those goals to help you get to that point and reevaluating them each week, adding yes. things in as you gain confidence or changing things that don't work so that, you know, every week it's a, it's a little bit different and it's and you're feeling progress every week I think that is such (laughs) a big part of it because I do think you know yeah you start to feel like why am I doing this I'm not getting anywhere maybe you're not sticking with it consistently and you get bored and and you kind of forget about it you say oh gosh I haven't worked out in a week or I haven't yeah you know done that but when you set those goals each week and you're reevaluating them and you kind of have something a little not so far out but you know three months out I think it's a good a good place it keeps you motivated keeps you moving. Yeah. And I, um, I'll probably be talking about this on every podcast, but journal your food and movement. It's yeah. so easy to become discouraged, um, or get out of a pattern of journaling, uh, what you're eating and how you're moving and then say, well, I'm not losing any weight. I'm not feeling any better. I'm doing everything I can. Right. Whenever, um, and, and Carrie, I can almost guarantee you've experienced this too. Whenever we really dig in with a client, and, and this is not, there's no shame in this. This is just human nature and, and beautiful acceptance of what is. But whenever we hear, I'm doing everything that, they ca- that I can, and we re- really dig in, two things. They're, they're just unaware of what's really happening. Right. Um, and, and what they're eating and how they're moving. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we really like slow down and take the time and go, oh, okay. And then I'll have them. I'm like, just give me a week. And if they're like, I can't do that. Okay, give me three days of solid food journaling. Right. The ahas that they have every single time without fail. Yeah. Um, so I'm always going to be talking about food journaling <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and yeah. and movement journaling to, to really... Um, have an objective view of what's happening. Right, right. And and that too with with your goals that you're setting, writing those down first of all, which just makes it that much more likely that you will achieve them just by writing it down and then assessing what happened week to week too. Taking a look back and saying, how successful was I with with this? What went well with it? 
what were my challenges? <laughs> what did I what did I like about it? And then and then what did I learn doing this? Maybe it was, wow, I bet off way more than I can chew. I'm gonna back it up for this next week. But right. if you're week to week, you're really evaluating it. You know, keep a journal of your goals and, and your experiences with those goals too. And and then you will see your progress and you'll see, you know, the things lights will start to, you know, those light bulbs yes. start to go off like, oh, okay. And you figure out what, what works for you. And I think that too is so important. What works for you? Yeah. And you just touched on something that I just want to blow up. Um, <laughs> it's okay if you didn't get to your SMART goals. It's okay yeah. if you look back and go, oh my gosh, I got one of my seven goals accomplished. I want everyone to be really gentle with themselves, but the important thing is to go, what got in the way? If I thought this was really important to me, then I need to take a hard look at what got in the way and then reprioritize them. So for example, I get to the end of my day and I've set my goals and I look back, I wrote out seven tasks for myself and I've reached for what got in the way. Okay, yeah, I probably didn't need to take that one phone call. I probably didn't need to write that email. Oh, and I probably didn't need that hour of television that distracted me. I probably would have felt better about this. Um, Right. So just really taking an objective look at what got in the way so that you can adjust your planning moving forward. Absolutely. I think that's one of the things I do come across quite a bit is, you know, people feel like if they don't accomplish the goal they set for themselves that their failure or, you know, I failed, you know, right. and, and I think it's really important to look at when you set a, set a goal, it's, you know, a lot of people look at it as trial and error. Oh, I messed up, but it's, it's trial and correction. It's yeah. not trial and error. <laughs> we like tried that. this, didn't work real well. Like you said, what were my challenges and what did I learn from that, that I can use moving forward and to, to rewrite this and to make it work for me. Yeah. I, I absolutely love that recommendation. And really reframing again we constantly want to catch ourselves um, being negative on ourselves and and using negativity to describe us that's just a bad blueprint for the brain to follow and it really follows our thoughts so if we can say something more like wow that that was um that was an opportunity to shift my priorities um, is much better than well i failed at that no i learned something really important through this lesson Yes. Yeah. They're definitely, it's, it's a learning experience every week and, <laughs> and we become more aware of what, what can get in our way. Sometimes, you know, like with food, maybe we're not fully aware of what we're eating with our schedules. We're not fully aware of how often things come up, you know, that, that change our schedule or, you know, or just kind of get in the way and bringing that awareness and thinking, okay, and learning flexibility or learning different yes. things to help you move forward is is important. And I've also found some clients have looked at their goals and especially when they're setting the same one every week and they're not achieving it every week right? and they're having a really challenging time embracing that. That's when I, you know, I'll be really direct with them and say, is this goal still important to you? Because we might come in like gangbusters on a certain thing that we want to accomplish. And then over the course of time, the things that we want to do to achieve that goal, we might come to, to say, you, you know what, that's, that's really not important to me anymore. But this, this one is, and that's okay, too. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Assessing how important, I mean, how relevant it is to you, you know, part of the, the smart goal there, <laughs> it's definitely very important. And, and having that motivation that, that comes from within you, you know, that those are the things that you want to achieve, because they're important to you. Right. I mean, it's definitely, you know, an important thing to keep assessing that and being aware of that and being in touch with that. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, so Carrie, um, are there any other last minute tips you can give our listeners about goal setting that's going to help them not only reach their goals, but right. maintain them for life? Well, I think, I think one is start small, yep. but, you know, but, but try to stretch a little bit. But it's okay to start small. I think that's important that you don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be I'm running a marathon next month. I mean, it's, you know, it, taking, you know, walk around the block is a great goal. It's you've got to really look at yourself and where you want to start from. So, you know, it's okay to start small. And, you know, another thing I think is really helpful is, is like I said, write it down. And maybe write it down on post-it notes and put it everywhere to remind you or put a reminder in your phone so that that 
is there and you're thinking, yes, this is something I want and something <laughs> I want to do. And the other thing I would say is be accountable to someone. Oh, I, think I love it. <laughs> whether it's a coach, you know, or whether it's a friend, whether it's, you know, who, whoever it yes. is but that you're sharing your goals with them and that you're discussing them. Someone, who, a non-judgmental person, you yes. know, somebody who's going to support you in that. But I think accountability is really important. And, you know, part of it is, is sharing what you want with other people too and opening up and putting that out there. I, so. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And that's why the community aspect of the Fit Fitlandia website is really important to me because that is a place to go there and get inspired. Or if you're just having a struggle, you can put that out there to the community to say, hey, can somebody like get me out of my head right. on this? And but also that accountability piece. We're we're actually in a future podcast going to be talking about the benefits of keeping it to yourself and some of the science behind that. I don't subscribe to that. I'm much better. The more that I put it out there, um, for me, that's motivating to me. Um, yes, it's that accountability piece that that I get from saying, no, I am going to do this. Because now I've got eyes on me. It's not just myself. And, yeah. I, and I often point out that many times we will do more for other people than we do for ourselves. It's, it's not the best, uh, it's, but it's no. human nature. But I invite us all to take advantage of that. Um, while we are learning to put ourselves first, take advantage of that. And your, your, your community of Fitlandians are counting on you to be a part of their healthy path too. Yeah, you got people out there saying, hey, did you get to your workout today? And if it's, you know, no, I didn't. Hey, what, you know, what happened? Right. You, maybe do you want to walk together or, yep. you know, having that support, but also somebody kind of checking in with you and saying, how's it going? Were you able to do it? I mean, I think that's, it's that's everything. just fantastic. It yes. is. And yeah. I'll throw this statistic out over and over. We are, we have a three times better chance of reaching and maintaining our goals when we connect with community that's on the same path. So yeah. um, anyone can go to the Fitlandia website at fitlandiafitness.com. We have a two week trial where you can access all of the mind zoning audio recordings, 74 page whole nine meal plan, nutritional coaching from our coaches that are on the community forum, as well as access to over 450 full length videos. But I do want to say too, you mentioned it. If you're really stuck and challenged, sometimes we do need one on one work. And that's why we have our expert practitioners so anyone can learn more about Carrie at CarrieBillings.com. Did I get that right, Carrie? Yes, you did. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being yes, a part of you. today's program and helping us create amazing goals for 2017. Yes, I love it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, take care. Thanks, you too.